Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this year in 2025, we had a ton of new features. Many of them were useful, some were huge changes with iOS 26, and many of them you probably forgot. So I thought we'd go over the best features of 2025, and we'll start with iOS 18.3 that released in late January. Now, the first thing is visual intelligence. It was updated to allow for identifying plants and animals. So if you had a supported device with visual intelligence, you could then snap a picture and it would identify those particular objects. Of course, it was updated later on with more intelligence, but that's where it started last year. With iOS 18.4, Apple added ambient music to the control center. So if we press and hold, then add a control, we can scroll down and you'll see ambient music with sleep, chill, productivity, and well-being. These were all added with iOS 18.4. There were some subtle changes in the control center where the Wi-Fi as well as cellular were then identified with real time updates within the control center as well. So you could see their actual status with the overall signal. So that's something that was added there. And then Apple intelligence added priority notifications. Not only was it available in more countries, but if we go back to notifications, they added priority notifications. So if you wanted to turn this on and supported devices, you had prioritize notifications and summarize notifications. So this is something they added, and then you could select the app that you wanted priority from. In addition to this, visual intelligence was added to the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, and iOS 18.4 was the new emoji update. So they added new emoji to comply with Unicode standards like they do every year. With iOS 18.5, it was less changes as we got further into iOS 18. There's going to be more refinements, less changes, but we got back tap updates. So if we go into accessibility, then if we scroll down to touch, scroll down to the bottom, we had back tap. Back tap was there before, but now we had a new option to show a banner. So if you utilize back tap to open the control center, you'll see you could see a banner at the top letting you know that it was activated. Also new in iOS 18.5, if we go under general and go under Apple care and warranty, it gained an all new UI. So you can see the UI changed along with iOS 18.5 and also RCS rolled out to geo in India. So Apple continued to roll out RCS for messages along with different carriers iOS 18.6 allowed for third party app stores to become available in the EU. You could install third party app stores, also third party apps. And then also you had a different option for default apps. So if we go into apps, we have default apps, and then you could set quite a few default apps as well. Everything from email to messaging, calling, call filtering, browser apps. And again, if you're in the EU, you'd have additional options as well. There was quite a few bug fixes with iOS 18.6. Also with the addition of iOS 18.6 was the addition of Apple Care One that allows for a certain subscription to cover all the different things that you have. You can add devices and it's cheaper than just buying it one by one. Now, when it came to iOS 18.7, that was mostly just bug fixes and security updates, and there wasn't a whole lot. And currently we're on iOS 18.7.3. But in September, Apple released iOS 26 with the biggest change to iOS in years. It's a whole new design language. Some people love it. Some people really dislike it. Now, the biggest change, of course, was liquid glass. We have liquid glass menus, liquid glass menus at the bottom here. And of course, Apple changed this throughout the different versions of iOS 26, all through the betas and the public release as well. The biggest changes were in places such as music. If we go into podcasts, of course, we've got the all new menu, liquid glass design, and a completely different look throughout. It does take some extra touches from time to time to go from one menu to the other. So that was actually a downgrade, but many people really appreciate the overall design of liquid glass, the way it looks, whether it's on the home screen or even the lock screen. So that's something that was updated. And of course, we're still getting refinements to that. One thing you may have forgotten if you don't use it regularly, if we go into messages within messages, we have the option to choose a background. So if we want to change it, you'll see it here. This is what it looks like. You can change through it. Now, this is something I typically disable as it seems to slow down messages and the way it works and maybe use a little bit more power. So this is something I don't typically use, but if you want to set up messages with different backgrounds for different contacts, you can do that, whether it's a photo, a color or an animation. We also gained the option to swipe back in the middle of the screen instead of the edge of the display for certain applications. Safari also got an update with a redesign with the address bar at the bottom where it sort of disappears and turns into liquid glass. So that was a big change. We also got new ringtones finally with iOS 26. So if we go into our sounds and haptics, not only do we have new ones, but you can set custom ones more easily. So this is my favorite currently. 
I really like the sound of Dreamer, but you can of course change it to whatever you'd like. So if you want to utilize that, it's available. And then of course there's other options throughout to add your own. You can do that directly from files. So that was a pretty big update. Auto mix was available in music. So if you want one song to fade to the next, similar to what a DJ would do, if we go back into music, we'll go into our settings with the shortcut that I like. I'll link this in the description. Our app settings shortcut brings us right into the settings for that application. But if we scroll down, you can see song transitions and auto mix. I actually really like this most of the time, but it's not perfect. So sometimes it's a little bit too soon and it doesn't go well, but most of the time it does a good job, at least in my experience. Also, the camera app got a major redesign. Now, some people love it. Some people don't. I like the simplification of it, but they seemingly made it a little bit harder to use if you're not familiar with it. So having odd menu placements, and I think we'll see this more refined over time. Of course, if we go into clock and then maybe we have an alarm here, so we'll go into the alarm. If we turn on snooze, we can now change the duration. So that was a nice change, not a huge one, but something they did update this time around. Also CarPlay got some updates with widgets and there was an update to just about every Apple app with the new menu, the overall liquid glass design, but it did take some time for that to roll out. But every icon was updated. And of course we had major updates with the home screen where we could change the customization to things such as clear if that's what you wanted. So lots of different custom customizations throughout. And of course that changed with iOS 26.1 as well. We'll talk about that in a moment. Of course, with iPad OS 26, the biggest update came with multitasking. If we go into settings, we can now change it to windowed apps, and then we can resize those apps, move them around wherever we'd like and move more additional windowed apps as well. So if you want layering, just like you can on Mac OS, you now had it on iPad OS. Now iOS 26 brought a bunch of useful features as well. For example, we had pause AirPods when you fall asleep. So maybe you're using your AirPods and you sleep with them in your ear. They typically can just turn off once you fall asleep on supported AirPods. So that's an option depending on the AirPods you're using. So if we bring in the AirPods 4 and within the AirPods settings, if we scroll down, just keep scrolling here, you'll see that you have pause media when falling asleep. So if that's something you want, that was a nice helpful update. There's also the option to share accessibility settings. This is super helpful for those that have accessibility needs and want to share the settings. You now have the option at the bottom here. You can share it and sync it to iCloud as well. Also in accessibility, something I find useful is under motion. So if we go up to motion here, and then we also have vehicle motion cues, they made additional options here. So you could change the appearance, have it automatic in vehicle, but change the color, make it larger, or even have more dots or be dynamic as far as the pattern goes. Also with iOS 26, if maybe you ran into a problem with the software, there's built in recovery modes. You won't typically see those as far as recovery, unless you're having an issue, but it tries to recover on device without needing a Mac or maybe a windows computer. When it comes to iOS 26.1, well, that's when Apple started to allow us to change the overall look of liquid glass. If we go into settings and this time around, we go into display and brightness. We now have the option for liquid glass to be clear or tinted. So this is something that some people were quite happy about. Those that don't like liquid glass had the option to basically turn it off along with some accessibility features that would basically disable the entire thing. Also the lock screen camera option was added. This is super helpful. So maybe you lock your phone. We unlock it here. You no longer have the option to slide to sort of unlock and go right into the camera. If you don't want it, that's something I turned on immediately as I had the button there already. And I didn't want it to just slide to turn that on. So if we scroll down in our camera settings here, you'll see lock screen swipe to open camera. I have it turned off. So I no longer can accidentally open the camera there. Also within the clock, you can now slide to cancel the alarm. That's now the default. So if it goes off at 1 PM here, we'll give it just a moment. And you'll see here with the alarm going off, we slide to stop. Now, if you don't want that, you can change that in accessibility, but that was added with iOS 26.1. Also the calculator got a bit of an update. So if we go into the calculator, you'll see, we now have a history button in the upper left. So you'll see all of your previous calculations from previous 30 days, September, or all the way back. So that's something that's new as well. And then of course, Apple rebranded Apple TV plus to Apple TV. So if we go into the TV app or see the TV app, we have an all new icon and there's no longer mentions of TV plus it's just Apple TV now. So it's a bit confusing. Hopefully that goes along with maybe a new Apple TV box that we get in the near future, but either way that was updated. Also iPad OS 26.1 brought something back as well. So with iPad OS 26.1, 
they changed a few things here. One of the major things though, was if we press the little traffic lights there, we now have slide over so we can exit slide over. We can place it into slide over and place it off the screen there. And then you get the arrow that you can bring it back. So that's something they updated with 26.1. Also with iPadOS 26.2, Apple brought back split view. This is something many people wanted as they were used to using it. So if we bring in maybe Safari here, you'll see we have slide over along with split view if you want to bring in another window. So all of those things are finally available. Again, you'll see this here. We can press and hold, do that again, press and hold, enter slide over. This one's in slide over now and it's off to the side. So definitely a nice change there and something they should have done from the start. Of course, one of the biggest changes with iOS 26.2 was the option to adjust liquid glass. So on this wallpaper here, we have the option to change the overall translucency and it looks a little bit different based on how you want it. So if you want it more frosted, you have that option. If you want it more transparent, you have that option as well. So it's completely adjustable with 26.2. Also, they updated a couple different apps. One in particular is the measure app where we now have a level that is now liquid glass. So we have that nice new change and that's something they brought with 26.2 within the music app. We now have offline lyrics. So that was really nice. And podcasts actually gained a nice feature. If you use this app, if you go into maybe the waveform podcast, we'll just turn it down here. We'll hit play. And once it plays here, we'll go into it it will automatically create chapters. Now it may take a moment to do that as it's using Apple intelligence. And you'll see now we have lines with different chapters, even with titles as well. Also within podcasts, Apple made it really nice other than just chapters to have links that are clickable. So it makes it much easier if you're in a different show. So you can go in and maybe click a link that they're talking about. For example, in this one here, if we scroll down, you'll see a bunch of links here that we can go directly to. Also reminders gained a nice update. So if we go into reminders, if we add a reminder, you'll see we have a new urgent option, which allows for an alarm as well. So again, something they added with 26.2. One of the most controversial changes in iOS 26.2 has to do with airdrop. If we go to general and then airdrop, you'll see manage known airdrop contacts, and you can automatically appear for 30 days to people you've shared a one-time code with. So if it's an unknown contact or unknown device you share something with, they can get a code, input it here, and then be recognized for 30 days. So all of those things were introduced with iOS 26.2, but there are some things we're still waiting for. I think the biggest thing people are waiting for has to do with messages. If we go down to our apps, go to messages within messages, scroll down, you'll see that we have RCS. So RCS messaging, but we're supposed to get RCS encrypted messaging. This is something we haven't seen yet. And hopefully they bring very soon. With iOS 26.4, we're expected to get the new Siri 2.0 update where Apple has apparently worked with Google to have a custom Gemini model to run on their private cloud compute. So we should have a new look, maybe, maybe different than what we already have with Siri and Apple intelligence, and also have much more intelligence there with contacts that works throughout the OS. Of course, we're waiting for stability and bug fixes and iOS 27 will bring maybe the biggest change with stability and be less of a feature focus. And we expect that in June at WWDC 2026 to be shown for the first time. So maybe June 8th. And of course, we'll have that release in September typically. Since January of 2025, we've had probably 500 different features and changes. Not all of them are visual. Not all of them are super helpful to everyone, but there's small changes throughout and Apple slowing down a little bit for iOS 27 would be welcome to have just much more stability, refinement, and a great experience with iOS 26.2. We gained different animations that were more similar to what Apple showed off at WWDC. So I think we'll see more of that refinement as changes are happening internally. But let me know what your favorite features are in 2025 from iOS. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.